the way. Um, feel free to leave questions in the comments. We'll go back and answer those during uh, the last five or 10 minutes of our course. Okay, great. So we're up and running here on Facebook. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. If you are just now joining me for the first time, uh, my name is Jerry. I'm the owner and founder here at Wealth Dynamics. And I want to welcome you to my wealth creation course. I do these every Friday night, every Friday night. And the reason I do these, the reason I do these is because money is a subject that is important. Okay, it's important. It's something that, that doesn't get talked about enough. Um, it's something that uh, we kind of, you know, have, have labeled a taboo subject. Those that don't have it usually hate on it. And then because of that, we never learn about it from them. Those that do have it, they usually don't share it with us. They're not, they're not out there telling us their secrets, right? So if you're watching this tonight, the reason why I come to you every single week, guys, I've come, I've done these live videos, I think every single week for the last two years or three years, every single Friday without missing a beat. And it's to spread knowledge. Okay, it's to spread not knowledge. I didn't have financial knowledge. I didn't grow up with with experts on money or people to look up to that were winning with money. Um, and and so when I started really searching that out, I came across a lot of information that sounded right, and so I followed it. Right, I followed it all the way into a career path. I became a financial advisor. Um, I got very good at that, and I spent you know probably four or five years of my life studying you know how to help people retire and how to help them invest their four hundred one ks and how to invest in mutual funds and all of that stuff. And 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 in two thousand seventeen, I left that. I had an entire business. I literally gave it away. Okay, think about that. That's, that's a big, big statement. And I want to go behind why that happened because it wasn't for nothing. It was, it was something that I came across that I hadn't seen before. I hadn't thought of before when it come, when it comes to money, there was, there was information I hadn't learned. Okay. Now my viewpoint on this, I want you to really quickly see if you can shift into my reality at the time. I'm, I'm 21, 22, 23 years old in that zone. Um, I was licensed as a financial advisor. Right. So, so there's different degrees of knowing money. There's I know money like naturally I can I can make sense of the math and the numbers. There's I know money because I've read some Dave Ramsey books and I've, I've you know, maybe studied it a little bit. There's I know money because I went to college for it. Then there's I know money because I studied federal exams teaching me all about it. And I became professionally licensed in the, in the eyes of the state and federal government. Different level. Right. So I had knowledge about money that nobody else had. And I don't wanna say nobody else, a very small percentage of the population had. I thought I knew it. I thought I had it all down. I would sit down with people, I could educate them, uh, you know, 24, 25 years old. I could tell someone who's 55, 60, 70 years old how they should be investing. I thought I had my stuff down, right? But I started noticing these little threads of illogic, right? I would sit down with somebody and I would help them with their retirement account meaning I'd, I'd help them invest it in the right mutual funds and in the right stocks and the right bonds. And I would show them why at age 60, they were going to be retired and totally fine. And I would look at their day-to-day -day life and they weren't free though. Like how many of us have seen that where, where somebody maybe older, 50, 60 years old in retirement, pre-retirement, but they're still worried about spending more, more money than they have in the budget. They're still worried about their debt. They're still worried about their mortgage. They're still not going on vacations. They're still worried about paying for their kids and grandkids' futures. They're not actually financially free. And that was illogical to me because I was like, man, I'm helping these people invest. Why are they still not doing well with their finances now? Okay, because I'm with you and you're 35, 40 years old. 60, that's a long time. That's 20 years. So, so I'm saying, hey, in 20 years, you're going to be good. You're like, yeah, but how about next week? How about next month? And so I started seeing these little outpoints and just illogics that caused me to look around and say, all right, is there other information? Like, I know I'm educated, but is there other information on money and how it works? That's where all this started. And, and I dove into a lot more than I knew existed. I kind of got in over my head, right? So I started learning about, you know, how money actually works. And before we had before we had Wall Street and before we had 401ks and before we had financial advisors, what did wealthy people do? And since then, what have wealthy people actually done by statistic, not by what they said on a YouTube video, by when I look at their finance or financial numbers, what do their actual numbers tell me? 
very different because Warren Buffett will go on YouTube and tell you to go invest in an S&P 500 index fund. No way in hell he's going to do it, though. So I need to look at what is Warren doing and not, is what, not what is Warren saying to do. Very different things, right? So all of this led to me learning enough information to look at a successful business I was running and say, I can't do this anymore. I gave that business away. I said, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. I don't believe in this. It's not helping people. Not only is it not helping people, I learned information that told me this is actually suppressing people. It's holding them down. It's preventing them from being, becoming financially independent. That's what I learned. And so I want to share with you today what I've come up with over the last three, four years as the solution. Okay, the plan that I follow, the plan that my, my clients follow, the plan that actually statistically works and has been used historically by the top 1%. This is not my stuff, by the way. This is not Jerry became, you know, a billionaire overnight and, and improved the finances of the entire world. No, no, no. It's I went back and studied what did Rockefeller do? What did Buffett do? What did Carnegie do? What did JP Morgan do? What are all these wealthy figureheads that built our country actually do with their money? And then I turned it into a system that I followed. And at 28, following that system has led me to over a million dollar net worth. Okay, that's, that's how well it works. And so when I'm sharing this, I want you to really realize this is not my opinion. This is data. It's data that I can't went back and researched and studied. You could go back and study it for yourself too. I'm going to show you what I came up with so that it can save you some time. Okay, now before we dive into the system that I use, I want to, I want to just kind of get everyone on the same page, right? Some of us are watching this tonight and we have investments, We've been paying off the house. We've been investing in the 401k. We've got all of the things you're supposed to do. And there's a little bit of an arrogance there of like, no, I already know my stuff. I'm good. I don't need this. The biggest barrier to learning is unwillingness to learn, thinking I know it all, thinking I'm good, thinking I don't need the information. So if I'm that person, I want to present to you that there's maybe something better than what you're doing based on the fact that there are people that have more progress right now than you currently have. Not in an invalidating way, in a way of like, it's a fact. There are people that have higher net worths that are living a better life, that have more wealth. And that means that you're not at the plateau of wealth. There's more there that we could still learn. There's people here today that are watching that uh, maybe you've been trying to learn about money. I've been in that boat. And for some reason, you just can't get traction. You've read the books, you've done the podcasts, you've gone to the conferences, you've paid the money to the experts. And for some reason, it's still not clicking. Is not resulting in, a, in an actual like product. Like this is how I can apply this. And here's the results I'm seeing. Okay. That's where I was for a long time. And I want to present to you this information that's true should work. It should be predictable. I should be able to say, if I do this, then that will happen as a definite result. And if that's not the case, there is something wrong with either the information or the application of the information. Only two things it could be. So tonight, if that's you, I want to show you that there's some information that you might not know, or there's maybe some ways that you've been applying information that if applied differently, you could really improve your finances. That was the boat I was in. There's some people here watching tonight too that are not interested in money at all. They're here basically because they have nothing better to do with their time. They're going to heckle in the comments, Instagram, I'm talking to you guys. I love those of you that do participate though. And, and those people, I hope to maybe spark some interest, like show you that there's more to life than what's going on now. You can build a future, you can build freedom. But the bottom line is this, guys. There is a way to do finances where wealth can actually be built. Consistently and predictably built. Okay, and, and it's not a secret that's impossible. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it tonight. Some of it is going to be unreal, meaning that you're going to see it and be like, no, there's no way, right? Some of it is going to conflict with fixed ideas and fixed viewpoints that we might have right now. And some of it is going to be a little bit of a spin or a tweak on something that you're maybe already doing, right? But I want to get agreement on there is a way. There is a way. And if we follow that way, it's going to result in all of us being able to build wealth, okay? Because if we look around us right now, it's not that way. It's, it's, there's, there's very definitely wealthy people, right? Top 1%, top 5%, whatever you want to call them, the super wealthy elite people. We know that that group exists. 
we know that there's kind of wealthy people, you know, people that are millionaires and they have successful businesses and they still can travel and do whatever they want to do, but they're not like ruling the world by any means. There's the middle class, those of us that have a good job and we can save some money every month and we have the car and life is good and we're happy. And then there's those of us that are struggling, right? And we're looking at, all right, well, what are those guys at the top doing? And why is it working for them and not for us? What are they doing differently? Okay, a couple things they're doing differently. They're not doing the 401k. They're not trying to pay off the house. They're not putting money in mutual funds. They're not buying annuities. They're not focused on term life insurance and being debt-free. Like those are not wealthy things. Those are middle-class things. And this isn't classism and to make anyone wrong. I'm just saying distinctly, there are different categories. There are those groups. We can all agree with that, love them or hate them. What did these guys do? What did these guys at the top do? And if we study that, could we do that too? And here's what I really want to drive home. The, the idea of like the traditional financial plan of go to school and get a good job and get good grades and all that stuff. So you can go to college, you can graduate and you can get your career so that you can buy a house, so that you can put money in your 401k, so that you can retire at 60. Who benefits from that? Who benefits from that? It's not you because you just got the college degree and you don't have the job you went to, school, went to college for. Who benefited there? College did, right? The institution and financing, right? The loan that we took out to get there. That was not us being benefited. That was them being benefited. Okay, well, what about, what about the, the 401k at the job? Who benefits from that? Did you know the only guarantee on a 401k plan is the fees you will pay to Wall Street? There's no other guarantee. There's no guarantee of returns. There's no guarantee of stability. There's no guarantee that there will even be money in that thing when you turn 60. But no matter what, whether you make money or lose money, Wall Street will get their fee. That's guaranteed. Okay. What about the house? Nothing wrong with owning a house, but who benefits there? Yeah, you have a roof over your head, but so do I and I rent. The bank did. The bank made interest on you for the next 30 years. You paid for your house twice in interest by financing and putting it on that mortgage. We have to really take a step back and look at what are the normal things we're being taught and who actually benefits from them. Because if it's not us benefiting with our finances, then why the hell are we doing it? Why are we still following this stuff? The wealthy are, are, are getting wealthier as a byproduct of us doing this stuff. We're getting poorer. We're losing money. Right? We're stagnating. They're growing. So there's some, div there's some differences there for sure. Now, here's what I want to dive into. I'm going to go and share my screen for you guys um, so that you can see what I'm looking at here. In Instagram, I'm going to flip you guys around. If you have questions tonight, and if you're just tuning in on Instagram, I'm Jerry. I'm the owner of Wealth Dynamics. Every week, I do a course on finances and wealth. And so tonight, we're talking about a pathway to financial freedom that anyone could follow. It has to work for everyone, right? So if you have questions on that, leave them in the comments. I'll answer those towards the end tonight. We're going to go for about 45 minutes here. Um, but I'm going to flip you guys around because I'm going to go through some visuals. And I want Instagram to be able to see these visuals as well. All right, so guys, here's, here's the steps, right? If we're looking at building wealth, here are the steps. The very first step of building wealth is to actually start learning about money to actually start learning about money. We've talked about this several times in previous weeks. What is money? How does it work? Where did it come from? How do we use it? That's the biggest thing to learn about money, guys, is how do I apply money? How do I use money in a way that I win? Because I could go to school and college and, and learn all about money. I can show you guys some broke ass financial advisors that are licensed out the wazoo that suck with their personal finances. They learned, quote unquote, about money, but they're not actually applying what they've learned. They're not winning with it. So the first step is to learn about money. So that, that's really like where things start with us. We have a program called Wealth Dynamics University. It's an online uh, training platform program that you can go in and you can learn about money. We have hundreds of segments on how money works, where it came from, how to use it, how to invest, how to reduce your taxes, um, how to save more, how to handle debt estate planning? How do I make sure that I avoid all of this, you know, court systems and probate? And how do I leave a legacy? Like all of this is topics we cover. And we do it through something called the triangle of knowledge. Okay, and I'm going to zoom this in a little bit for you guys. There we go. Triangle of knowledge. Now the triangle of knowledge says that if I'm going to learn about something, 
I have to have information on that thing. I have to have application and I have to actually have that thing. Meaning if I'm going to learn about money, I have got to have information on money, like true information about money. I've got to have application of that information. And then I actually physically have to have money. I can't learn how to apply money if I don't have money. So that's the first component. Wealth Dynamics University is where we start with people and helping them achieve that. And the reason I say this is none of us were ever taught about finances. Okay, the average person, if you're like me, you went, to, you went to middle school, high school, not once was money talked about in a way of how do you get good at it? How do you, how do you build wealth with it? How do you become financially free? Yeah, maybe you learned how to balance a checkbook. Maybe you learned, um, you know, the basics of, of what a stock market is or, or something of that nature, but it wasn't how do you apply money and win with it? Why wasn't I taught that? That's basic arithmetic being, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I learned arithmetic in like middle school. So I could have just had them put dollar signs in front of all the numbers and I would have learned about money, right? And I would have loved math on top of that. So that's the first step on this is I have to, I have to learn about money. Now, the sub step below this, I'm going to say down here even is that I have to actually down here is a subproduct of this. I have to actually have the willingness to learn about money, right? Meaning that I've got to actually realize I don't know what I'm talking about and there's other stuff and there's more I could learn, right? So that's the very first step of this. Now, the second step is to increase my income, right? I've got to increase my income. This is our second step. Now, this is, this is very counterintuitive. This comes from back when I was a personal trainer. I, I talk to people sometimes and they're like, hey, what do I need to be doing right now with my finances? I'm, I'm in debt or I, I can't save money and things aren't going well and I'm stressed out. You got to increase your income, bro. Like when I was a trainer, right? I would help people work out. I was a personal trainer. I helped them with their workout, their diet. And somebody that's never worked out before, somebody that's not following a diet that hasn't been going to the gym does not need a personal trainer because anything would improve them. Stop eating sugar. They would lose weight. Go walk on the treadmill 30 minutes a day. They would lose weight. It doesn't, it's not this complex strategy that they need yet. So somebody that's like, my credit's bad. I'm broke. I can't save. I've got all this debt. I've got collections. Like that person just needs to go work. They just need to go earn income. There's no special magic trick that we have to do yet. It's the basics of I'm not producing and I need to so that I can actually have means to start winning with finances. Like we talked about down here, in order to learn about money, I actually have to have money. I actually have to have money to learn about money. If I don't have money, it's very hard for me to increase something I don't have in the first place. Right. So we have things that we teach our clients at this level. One of them is called DITI. Right. This stands for debt, insurance, taxes, and investments. Okay. These are the four categories. If I'm doing DITI, this means that I, I right now could, you know, I'm trying to save more, I'm trying to earn more, I'm trying to start to get established financially. And the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to handle my debt. Okay, a lot of people in this position, they're trying to do the debt snowball, meaning they're putting all of their money towards their debt. And what's happening is they're basically going broke on paying off debt and then something happens and they're broke and then they go back in debt. So we're reducing in this step, all of our debt payments down to the minimum payment. We're not pay paying a dime extra on payments. That comes later. Okay. The other thing we're doing is we're going and we're cutting insurance costs. Okay. We're going to go look at health insurance and car insurance and renter's insurance and all the insurances we own. And we're going to look at how cheap can we get these? Because that's going to free up cash. We're trying to free up cash with this little step. The other thing we're going to do, who gets a tax refund? Anyone get a tax refund? Okay. Tax refund means that the government stole from me more than they should have all year long, kept it. I charged them zero interest and then they give it back to me at the end of the year. That's not a good thing. I shouldn't be like excited that I got a tax refund. That means that I got ripped off. So we're going to adjust taxes so that I no longer get a refund, make less money out of my paychecks. Now I have more money, right? So I've got more money here. The final was, one is investments. Guys, I meet people all the time that are in debt. They don't have money in reserves. They're insolvent, yet they're contributing to the Roth IRA. They're contributing to the 401k. 
You don't need to be doing that right now. If I'm insolvent, Wall Street does not need my money. That can't help me right now. That's money that I don't touch till I'm 60, even if it's even, even there in the first place. Okay, so I've got to look at if I'm trying to improve my money today, I don't need to be sending it to somewhere that I can't touch until I'm 60. Right. So these four categories, D, I, T, I, I can immediately improve my finances with this. And this is not something I even need the help of a professional with. I can figure out how do I pay less on my debt? Well, I just lower my payments down. I can figure out how do I shop and call some insurance places and get cheaper insurance. I can figure out how do I go to my HR department and ask them, how do I adjust my taxes on my paycheck? Should they take less money out? I can go on my website and halt my 401k contribution. That's all easy to do. Right. So this is the very first you know, step of like trying to get more money every month in my budget and more money to work with to actually build. Right. Now, the next step after this is we do something called the triangle of income. OK, the triangle of income. Income happens when I have knowledge, when I have value and when I have exchange. Only then. Right. And, and if I don't have an exchange with somebody, I can't get money because I didn't give them anything. They're not going to give it to me back if I didn't give it to them in the first place. If I didn't have value, they're not going to want to exchange. And if I don't have knowledge, I'm not valuable. So if I'm trying to increase my income, I've got to go, all right, let me get some knowledge on a topic, on a thing that's valuable to other people, and then get an exchange with them and start increasing my income. This means I have to extrovert. This means I have to go talk to a stranger. This means that I have to go sell. This is like make or break. If I don't do this, I'm not going to build wealth. I'm not going to improve my finances. It, and it goes beyond just showing up to a job and working for a paycheck because that's not stable either. We just watched however many million people the last couple of months lose that job that they had. So it's got to be an innate, innate quality and talent and skill that I have to go earn income. And it starts with knowledge, value, and exchange. Okay. Once I have this down and I'm earning an income, next I go over here to something called the triangle of wealth. Okay, the triangle of wealth means that I earn income, I save it, then I invest it. This is where I actually start forming my finances. Like I actually have finances established, meaning I have income every month, I have savings every month, and I'm investing that somewhere. Okay, if I'm not doing these three things, it's kind of like someone saying, man, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. And you're like, all right, well, are you, are you eating right? No. Nope. Okay. Um, are you going to the gym? No. All right. Uh, are you getting enough sleep? No. Like that. No wonder you can't make progress. I can't make progress by not doing these things. I've got to do all of these things. And if I do all of these things, then I actually can make progress with my finances. And then I can actually say that I've got a bat to swing with. I can't even play if I don't have these three, three things going on. Okay, now this stuff is very simple. So what I want to avoid is someone watching this and saying, well, you know, it's really difficult to earn income or saving money is really hard or investing is too complex. Earning income is simply go, go trade something for money. And again, time, knowledge, value, resources, a product, something, go trade something for money so I have income. Saving means just keep some of it. Like spend less than I made. That's the simplicity of saving money. It's not more complicated than that, okay? Investing means that I'm going to put the money somewhere where it's going to grow. If I'm in debt, paying off debt is investing. I'm going to do that. If I'm beyond that step, that's going back to, all right, well, first, I probably need to do some learning about investments before I make the investments happen. But again, it's really simple. So it's not like this very complex thing that we've got to really wrap our minds around and stress out about. So I've got that down, right? These are all very foundational steps. You guys have probably heard me talk about some of these before, but it's one of those things like bathing. We got to keep doing it, right? Uh, once I've done this, I become consumer debt-free. Consumer debt-free. Now I do it with the sacred account. The sacred account is a tool that I'm going to use to pay down my debt and still grow the money while it's paying my debt down so that I pay the debt off, save the interest, and my money grew the entire time. It's the difference between debt between being debt-free and broke and being debt-free and ready to invest is the sacred account. So I'm going to use the sacred account. I'm going to pay off my debt. Now with consumer debt, it means things like credit cards, this means things like medical debt. This means things like student loans. This means things like car loans. This does not mean mortgage debt right now. We're not trying to pay off a house at this point. 
that that's something we're going to discuss on what do we do with the house later right um now once i've got that stuff down now i need a plan so this is the next step we take clients through now notice we did not start with a plan Again, if, if, I'm, if I'm not ever working out and not ever dieting and never going to the gym and never doing any, I don't need to have a personal trainer give me this fancy assessment. I already know I'm out of shape. I already know I need to exercise. I already know that I need to eat less than I burn. I'm going to do that automatically and lose weight. Just with finances, if I'm not winning financially, I already know I need to learn, learn about money. I, know, I already know I need to earn income and save and all this stuff. Once I've actually started doing that, then I can get a plan. But if I give you a plan here and you're not even like educated on money and earning income, you're going to do nothing with the plan because you're not doing the basic stuff that comes before a plan. I've got to actually be doing that stuff before a plan actually even makes sense. You see that? So I, I get the plan established. This plan tells me, the blueprint tells me, what are my goals? Where am I at? What do I need to start doing to get from where I'm at to where my goals are? That simple. And then I just continue following and updating and following and updating until I make progress. Now, the next step that we go through with somebody is achieving six months of expenses and reserves. Okay, six months of expenses and reserves. This means that I count up how much does it take me to live in a month, and I save the equivalent of six of those months in reserves. Six months. Now, six months seems like a lot. If I spend three grand a month, three times six is $18,000. Right. That's that's thousands of times more money than somebody the average American has right now. So that sounds like a big number. It's not going to happen immediately. I'm going to work towards that. Right. But if I get six months of expenses and reserves, I want you just to imagine the level of like just security and peace that I have if that's happening for me. COVID-19 happens. I'm good, man. I'm fine. I've got six months in reserves. I, it's OK. You know, I don't like losing my job, but it's OK because I got money put away. That's what it comes down to versus I'm screwed and I'm on unemployment and food stamps, right? Six months are in reserves means I'm solvent. I'm able to keep going, okay? Now, once I've done this, I start then working towards investing. Okay, now I'm not investing in my 401k. I'm not investing in a Roth IRA. I'm not investing in the stock market. I'm investing for one thing, one thing only. I'm investing for passive income. Okay, passive income. Passive income is money that shows up from an investment every single month without me trading my time for it. The reason why is I'm going to slowly buy my time back with this passive income. Okay, I'm going to slowly buy my time back. Meaning if I have to make five grand a month right now working to pay my bills, I'm going to invest until I get five grand a month or more in passive income so that I don't have to work anymore. That is financial freedom. So when I invest, I'm investing for that. I'm not investing for when I'm 60. I'm not investing for Wall Street. I'm not investing for my 401k match. I'm investing for passive income. If I'm investing for passive income, it means that I don't do things that don't pay me passive income, right? Now, the next thing I'm going for, this is the next thing I teach my clients is save 40% of my gross income. Gross income means before taxes. My pre-tax income, I'm going to save 40% of it. 40, that's a lot. That's a big number. Some of us watching this, if you're like me, when you first saw 40, you're like, that's impossible. There is no way I'm going to save 40%. That's not real. How would I even do that? Okay, now here's the issue, which we kind of solved down here. Most people could save 40% if they did not have a bunch of debt. So if we get rid of the debt, we've now freed up all of this extra money and we could actually do this. Now you're like, Jerry, what if I freed up all my debt and I still can't save 40%? Well, that means that you skip step number two, increase income. If I really did increase my income and I really did pay off all of my debt, I should have no issue saving as much money as I want to. Okay, now some of this stuff makes sense. You're going to hear this and you're going to be like, conceptually, that makes sense. I don't know how to do it. That's why we exist. That's why we have a university. That's why we have a blueprint. That's why we have all of the stuff we do professionally for our clients is because if you could do this, you would already be doing it. See, there's a missing ingredient that's making it not happen. And it's not going to magically show up one day. And, and I hope you don't just quit and give up on it. That's why my company exists. We help you get there. Right now, once I've saved 40% of my income, 
realize, realize what I've done so far. I've learned about money. I've increased my income. I have no debt. Uh, I have a plan. I have six months in reserves. I've got my first passive income showing up every month. I'm saving 40% of my income. The next step is to build a $250,000 net worth. Okay, $250,000 net worth. The average person probably right now doesn't get to that point until they're 50, maybe 40 or 50 years old. Okay, sometimes I'll meet people in their 30s that have a $250,000 net worth. Net worth means the things that I owe minus the thing or the things that I own, sorry, the things that I own, own minus the things that I owe equal 250K, not including my house. That's a $250,000 net worth. I'm trying to build that and get here, right? So that's my next step. I'm focusing on that. Now, this can take years. It can take months. It could take decades, but it all comes down to how much did I save, how much did I earn, and how well am I investing with my passive sources? And am I reinvesting those passive sources? If I'm doing all of that efficiently, I'll get to a $250,000 net worth. Now, the number 250 is made up. It's arbitrary. There's no special thing that happens when you get there. But the thing is this, everything is a multiple of that 250 because the next goal is to get my net worth to a million. A million is 250 four times. So if I can do 250 once, it's real for me to be able to get to a million because I'm like, well, I already did that once. I just have to do it three more times and I'm at a million now. Versus if I just tell you, hey, get to a million and you're like, uh, I'm not even at 50. How am I going to get to a million? It's not real, right? So we're going to get to 250 first. That's a multiple off of a million. And once we get to a million, something really cool happens here, by the way. At a million, there's a phrase here. It's called accredited investor. And excuse my six-year-old handwriting, but uh, accredited investor. When I become when I become an accredited investor, it's because I have a two hundred or a one million dollar net worth. Okay, at a one million dollar net worth, I become an accredited investor. Now, here's the deal: when you think investing, when I think investing, for those of you that aren't clients of mine already, what do you think of? You think of stock market. You think of mutual funds. You think of retirement plan. You think of maybe real estate. You think of those are the main things, really. Maybe some bonds, right? At accredited million dollar net worth, I'm allowed to know about investments that I legally was not allowed to know about prior to becoming an accredited investor. Guys, no one teaches this stuff. This blew my mind when I thought and learned about this. Literally, there's something called a, a, an accredited investments, a private placement investment, if you really want to do some research on it. And that particular investment does not exist for those that are below a million dollar net worth. Okay. For example, for example, there's one type of investment when I'm a million dollar net worth where I can invest in an income producing asset that pays me monthly cash flow every single month and I can write off 100% of what I've invested against my income that year. Think about that. That's literally paying no taxes. Like if I made 300 grand, I could put 300 grand in this investment, pay zero in taxes on my 300 grand and make monthly cash flow. And it's backed by real estate. And I'm going to earn something on the back end when they sell it in the equity that I have. Okay. This is how severe this is. As, as a broker for private placement investments, meaning at the million dollar level, I help people invest at this point. I'm legally not allowed to share the details of those investments with you if you're not accredited. I could get fined by the federal government. I could go to prison. That's that severe. They do not want people knowing about these if they're below a million dollar net worth. What does that mean? It means that if I'm not a millionaire, there are other types of investments that I don't even know exist. Right? Like, like think of the first time you had chocolate. If you like chocolate, right? You were a baby, you grew up on baby food, breast milk, maybe some mashed up carrots and peas, like really not very delicious stuff. And then one day you had chocolate. Before chocolate, you didn't know there was a concept of chocolate. You didn't know it exists. It wasn't a concept in your mind. You had no imagination. I'm like, man, there's this thing called chocolate and it's awesome. But once you had it, you were like, holy cow. Why have I not had this before? And how do I get some more of it? That was just chocolate. And when the point I'm trying to make here is that's what this is. 
those of us that will look at this and we we scoff and we're like, oh, that's not real. Like there, there's no way that that this happened to you with chocolate, dude. Like you didn't know chocolate existed at some point. So it's not unreal to say that there are investments you've never heard of before. The point is though, get here. This is literally nitrous for your finances. You get here, you multiply and make progress faster. You play with, with tools and investments that other people don't even get to know exist when you get to that point. No one talks about it. That's why you've probably never heard this before because no one talks about it. Now, once I get to a million, my next step here is to become financially free. Okay. So that means I have passive income, like we talked about, income that shows up from my investments every single month without me working, without me trading my time for it. I have passive income that exceeds my expenses, 40% savings and taxes. That is financial freedom. Let me clean some of this up for you guys too. So I have I have enough passive income showing up every month that all of my bills get paid. All of my taxes are covered, right? And I'm still saving 40% of my income only on passive income. That is financial freedom. That is the moment when I can say, hey, screw it. I'm not going to work tomorrow or ever again. Full time, I'm just going to live life on my terms the way that I want to. Right now, the problem with this is it takes a while. It's not easy. You have to go through all of these steps. The point that I want to make, though, is nobody's ever showed you how to do these steps. No one's ever said this is the route. Never. Not, not once has there been this is the way you do this. This is the way you get here. Right. The other thing here is, yeah, this is a lot of work, but it builds discipline. The person that goes through and does all of these things leading up to becoming financially free is going to have built more character than the person that didn't. They're going to be a better human being than the person that didn't because they had to practice knowledge and exercise discipline and, and prioritize. They're going to get to a point where they're here and they're going to do better things with that money than somebody that didn't have to go through those things. Okay, this is a moment of, of achievement and pride. Like if somebody gets here, that says a lot about who they are as a human being and the level of aptitude and intelligence and discipline and application and understanding that they have to be able to have achieved that. Okay, that's my passion is helping people get there. Now, once I've done this, the next step here is now a $5 million net worth. Now you're probably like, Jerry, we just said it was a 1 million. What's the deal with the 5 million? At 1 million, at 1 million, I'm an accredited investor as a person, as an individual, okay? At 5 million, I can become an accredited investor as a trust or a corporation. Okay, let me ask you, is Apple a person or is it a corporation? Corporation, what about Microsoft? What about the U.S. government? Corporation, right? I want to be a corporation. A corporation that's investing in these types of deals can do bigger deals. They have more protection. They have a lot less liability. They have less taxes. They have more tax write-offs. And so I want to get here next. When I get here, I can go do that, that, that deal that I mentioned, but I can do it as a corporation or as a trust. And I'm going to have the benefits of being a corporation or a trust in that deal. I can't do that down here. I have to invest as Jerry Feta. I don't get the tax write-offs that I get on the corporation or the trust. I don't get the protection that I get on the corporation or the trust. So this is a huge deal to get there. Okay. So 5 million, most people never achieve 5 million. Okay. That's like top, maybe top 20% of, of the country will achieve a $5 million net worth. Okay. So again, it's not an easy thing to get to, but here's the thing. Most of us are going to live till our seventies, eighties, or nineties. We have plenty of time to get there. If we do the right things with our finances that notice, I've not yet said contribute to the 401k. I have not yet said buy a home. I've not yet said put money on wall street. The reason why most people never get here is because they're doing all of those things. Who's making money? The mortgage company, wall street, the bank, their mutual fund guy, like that's where the money is going because it's going there. I'm not keeping it and I'm not actually building wealth. Okay. Now, once I've hit 5 million, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to 10 million. I'm going to double it. Now, this is a legacy number. You hit 10 million, you are officially in the top 1% of wealth. 
Okay. Now, some of this, like, like 10 million for some of you, I'm going to lose you here. Cause this is way beyond where you've thought of going. And you're like, wow, that's like, that's out, out reality for me. I'm not interested in that. I just want to be happy. Right. We'll get you there. Okay. I promise if you keep watching this, we'll get you there. You'll get to a point where you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. I understand this. And this, this makes sense. Some of you guys, you're interested in this. Now I want to share with you why I'm interested in it. Okay. Right now, if you look around you, what's happening? We have race problems going on. We have political problems going on. We have pandemics going on. We have uh, government quarantines and regulations. We're out of control, meaning we as citizens are not in control of our lives in our country because people who are here are in control instead. Right during COVID, everyone was banging up Bill Gates, Bill Gates and the and the and the the, the vaccines and and the WHO and all this other stuff. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But by even like looking at that and putting attention on that, I am admitting Bill Gates has power to run this country that I don't have because of the money he has. Okay, during this whole whole protest and riots, everyone's been hitting up George Soros as the guy. Maybe he is the guy, maybe he's not the guy. But again, by even having attention on that, I am saying George Soros possessed his power from a different country to rule over my country in a way that I can't and I'm a citizen here. If I want to inf- I w- if I want to affect change, I have to get here. I have to get big enough to actually get in the game. Okay, imagine if the majority of the money was in the hands of the good people in this world, the people that wanted to help, the people right now that understand what's going on, the people that want others to have equal rights, the people that want to teach others how to get there, not the people that want to suppress others and hold them down and cause violence and division. Because right now that's who has the money. And if we want to change that, we need more of us to have the money. The good people that will do the right things need to have more of the money, therefore more of the power and the influence. That's my passion. So a $10 million net worth, that makes me a qualified family office. Family office means that I am actually able to set up my own investment fund. So you guys, you know, doing the 401k, you have different funds in your 401k that you can choose from, right? Different investments. What if you could be one? Like, what if you could build enough wealth that you could literally take over Wall Street's job and kick them out entirely? That's the goal here. That is the goal. This is true generational wealth, financial freedom, and influence over what happens in your community. If you have a $10 million net worth and you don't like the condition of your community, let's say it's homelessness or drugs or whatever it might be or violence, you could literally change it. You could literally change it at that point. Okay, imagine your grandkids starting life knowing that they have their grandparents built this organization and trust that's doing all of this good in the world. Because of that, they're going to be financially free for the rest of their lives automatically and be able to participate in your legacy. That is huge. Okay. Now, once I've done this, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to join the League of Family Offices. This is called the Wealth Dynamics League of Family Offices. This is our group that we're building to create family offices so that we actually have like a unity of wealthy families that are clients of ours that are changing the direction of the planet with their wealth, with their power, with their influence. Imagine having thousands of families that are at a $10 million net worth that are all in agreement with each other. They're all speaking the same language. They all understand the goal. They're all trying to impact the world in a good way. And they have unification behind that. They're not politicians. They're not the Koch brothers. Like they're, they're, they're literally like they are, are making things happen in this world in a way that's never happened before. We have to get what's called a critical mass, meaning there has to be enough of us to actually be able to do that, which means enough of us need to have been able to get up these steps, this pathway to actually achieve this, right? Now you can see why I do so much promoting on finances. Let's get financially literate. Let's get you out of debt. Let's increase your income. Let's get you further and progress because I want you here because the big mission that we have is to be able to help you start your fund and literally replace Wall Street and and basically have it to where we don't need those guys anymore. Okay, my client, Brad, he texted me probably two, three weeks ago. He's like, hey, watch this documentary. It's called The China Hustle. Okay, so I watched it, right? I watched it. It's on, uh, uh, I think, YouTube, Amazon. I don't think it's on Netflix. But on The China Hustle, let me flip Instagram around. On this show, The China Hustle, um, 
literally it showed that there are Chinese companies, billionaires that will buy fake companies and put them on the United States stock exchange where you and I as investors will go buy shares of their company. What we don't know is these Chinese companies fraudulently reported their accounting numbers and they don't actually exist. So we're giving a bunch of money to these guys. They're ripping us off and it's totally legal because it's on the stock exchange. That's Wall Street. Wall Street knows that that's happening. Wall Street helps these companies do that. They're not out to help you retire. They're out to earn fees. They're out to earn money on your money and do it without paying you anything if they don't have to. Bottom line, okay? So this whole thing that Wealth Dynamics is doing, it's about purpose, wealth, and freedom. Freedom means that we all have the ability to choose whatever we would like to choose. The ability to do whatever we would like to do, right? Right now, the number one lack of freedom that all of us have is financial. I can't really say that I want to go where I'm going to go and and not have to think about the money or I want to give money away and not have to think about it. I want to buy this or live here or do this or give that or because of the money, right? That's all of our problem. It is the number one restriction and barrier that all of us have in common, regardless of race, gender, skin color, any of that stuff, political beliefs. We all struggle with that. We all have that as a barrier. So why am I teaching this? Because I want to help unrestrict people. This is my passion in life. This is what I do for people. This is why I'm in business. This is why I do these live videos, why I do the posts that I do, why I give out my book for free, why we have the university, all of the stuff. And we're actually helping people do that on a regular basis. Okay, I just had a client today text me uh, on a, on a, on a, um, I got on a coaching call with him actually. And he's like, hey, in the last month, I've paid off $12,000 in debt using the sacred account. Okay, I had a client the other day text me on or message me on Facebook and he's like, hey, you literally helped me pay off my mortgage last month, a $300,000 mortgage gone. And then pull the equity out of it and go invest to earn passive income. Okay, I have a client, uh, a couple, they're in their 60s and 70s. I w- worked with them last week. They're about to have almost $20,000 a month in passive income showing up month after month after month. They're going to be financially free. This is real is my point. This is something you could do. It's something you should do. And and if you're watching this tonight and there's any part of you that's inspired, that should tell you something. That should tell you I'm obligated to try and get there, to at least try. Because right now the option is I keep living life the way I've been living it and be either, again, in poverty because I've quit on money or in ignorance because I don't want to confront because I, I, because I don't want to confront what's actually happening or go build wealth. It's one of those three things that I'm going to do. And if this resounded with me at all tonight, I better pick the third one of, I need to at least try to go build wealth. At least give it a shot. Okay. Cause could you imagine if wall street was gone and it's, Instead of, instead of people using Wall Street, they followed this. They built their own family office and they did their own investing. And they didn't invest in China. They invested in their community and in their cities and in their states and in businesses and real estate and things that actually help the people around them. Not invisible shares of nothing that, that are, could disappear at any time. Okay. So guys, the reason I wanted to share this is this is our pathway to financial freedom for anybody. It doesn't matter who you are, your background. Like if you're willing to start out, you might have to start right at the bottom. Like we talked about learning about money, you know, getting control of your income. Like everyone's got to start somewhere, but if you're willing to start and put the work in, we're willing to help you get there. Bottom line, I don't care if you're if you're a different skin color than I am. I don't care if we have different religions. I don't care if you have a different political stance. I don't care if you live in a different country. Like, I'll help you do it if you are trying to get there. And that's the whole point of this stream tonight is this is the pathway. This is what I've been doing. And, and this is something that I can help you do too. So what I want to do, guys, really quick is I want to open this up for questions. We've got about five minutes left here tonight. Um, If you guys are on Instagram, drop your questions in the comments. I will answer them. If you're on Facebook, same thing. Um, If you're on Zoom, use the chat feature or the Q&A feature. Drop your questions there as well. I'm happy to answer those. And um, let me go ahead and pull up. Let me pull up Facebook first. Awesome engagement on Facebook, by the way, guys. Thank you all for joining. Um, Great to see everybody here. What's up, Sean? Good to see you. Eric, great to see you. Uh, Brad, great to see you. 
Eric has a question. So Eric says, are top financial advisors graded on the amount of money they've made for their clients or on the amount of money they've made for their firm and fees, commissions, et cetera? It's a good question. I'm gonna give you an honest answer. Um, they're, they're graded on, on the second, their fees. So if you talk to an independent advisor and they're never going to tell you this, but with their, they, so there's the advisor, right? Then there's the broker dealer or the firm they work for. Their firm grades them on something called GDC, gross dealer concession, meaning how much money did you bring into the firm in fees or in commissions? That's what their performance is based on. It has nothing to do with how much money did you make for your client. And I'm not even saying advisors shouldn't make money. If you can make someone a ton of money as an investment advisor and actually help them, you should be able to get paid anything you ask for as long as you're making your clients more than that, right? But for that to be the thing that your success is measured on, I'm with Eric on that. That's kind of messed up because there's no, there's no um, you know, grade or test or, or validation on how much money did you make your client. In fact, it's opposite of that. If I'm a financial advisor, I have to disclose to my client, I can't promise you returns and past investments. I have no, no future statement of performance on, on current or future. It doesn't, like they're not correlated, right? Excellent question, Eric. Great to see you, Reggie. Glad you were able to make it on the live here. Justin, good to see you. Um, Brad Reese says, no tax refund for us. I didn't loan the government interest-free money. That's excellent. Uh, Eric says he owed $18 on his taxes. That's awesome. Adam, great to see you. Um, so Eric says, my wife and I have freed up almost, almost $1,200 per month in cash flow by leveraging the sacred account. It does work. Follow the plan. So guys, let me zoom this in even for Instagram. This is my client, Eric. Eric is saying because of the plan that we're following with him, he has freed up $1,200 per month in cash flow. Okay, 1200 bucks a month. That's not chump change. Imagine having $1,200 per month back every single month that you can save and you can actually you know, invest with. Uh, Justin, great to see you. Patrick Clark says, do you put the six month reserves in the sacred account or is that something we should have? bank. So Patrick, that's a really good question. You can put that in the sacred accounts. You can put that in your home equity line of credit. Um, you could also put that in gold and silver. I would recommend a combination of all three. Um, you know, if I want to do two months in, or one month or two months in cash and then split the rest somewhere else, I really try and keep very little in the bank. Um, there, there is such a thing as a bank run, meaning if a bank ever gets tight on money, you know, they can basically like say, hey, I don't have to give your money. Like I'm going to keep it even if you want to pull it out. So I try not to keep a ton of it in the bank. Brad's pumped. I'm pumped too, Brad. Uh, Sean is driving from Florida to Alabama. Uh, be safe, Sean. Have a good drive. Okay, cool. That's all the comments I see on Facebook. Um, let me go ahead and see if we have anything here on Zoom. Do we have any questions on Zoom? Awesome. No questions on Zoom. Cool, guys. So let me see if Instagram has anything. Um, Dark Daddy Stefan. Hey, you might be up too late. You should check with your parents and see if you're allowed to be on here right now. Um, Let's see if we have any other questions. Dave, great to see you, Dave. Uh, Dave checked out my podcast with Bradley. If you guys didn't see my podcast, go on Brad's YouTube or my YouTube. I was on his show, Dropping Bombs, uh, the other week. It's very fun, very interesting. I love Brad. Let me see if there's any other questions here on Instagram. Uh, Alexander Hamid says, I swear you did the same video a month ago. So I want to go ahead and make this point on what Alex says here. So money is not new. It's been around for thousands of years. So you're going to hear a lot of the same information about money. Instead of thinking, have I heard this before? I want you to think, have I been applying this? If I haven't been applying it, I need to hear it more times. Um, because it's not going to be like this new concept of like, hey, I found out this new way to you know, have money that's never existed before. It's always going to be the same stuff to some degree. And it's been around forever. So it's just not going to be new information every single time. It's going to be the same thing. It's just like working out, just like dieting, you know, eat, eat less than you burn, go to the gym and try and stay healthy. Right. 
Uh, Mario says he heard the podcast with Bradley. That's awesome. Thank you, Mario. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Mario says, bro, I started with your knowledge and two years after my life has completely changed. That's so cool, man. I'm glad to hear that. So Mario is saying two years ago, he started listening to my lives. And since then, his life has changed entirely. That's awesome. I'm excited for you and very proud of you, man. All right. I think that that is everything we have here. Uh, Jeff, the entrepreneur says, hey, saw you on Bradley. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Awesome. So I think that's everything we have on Instagram. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here tonight. Um, let me just check one more time, make sure we don't have anything on Facebook. Great. So everything looks good here. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you do like, share, and subscribe if this helped you. If you watch this tonight and you want to learn more, about what we do. I want to give you two links in the comments here. So we're going to do a free trial to Wealth Dynamics University. So if you go to membership.jerryfeta.com, I'm going to give you a free 14 day trial to Wealth Dynamics University. And um, like, take me up on that. I want you to have access to that and learn the information in that program. It's very valuable and it's going to help you a ton. The other link I'm going to drop is jerryfeta.com. That's a free copy of my book. So if you go to jerryfeta.com, you can get a free copy of my book. Um, you cover shipping. I'll send the book out to you for, I think it's like seven or eight bucks, but I'll send that out to you. Make sure you check that out. And the reason why I do these guys is I want you to take action with your finances. Okay. Don't at all think it's, you know, I'm getting rich off of a, a $7 shipping and handling fee on the book I'm sending you, right? Or the free trial of Wealth Dynamics U is somehow going to make me rich at your expense. Like go get the information. It's there. Make sure you check it out. So guys, thank you again. I will talk to you all next week.